What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got to talk about this episode of SmackDown. It was a fantastic show, man. Definitely SmackDown on USA. You can tell the excitement. You can tell there was a, a different feel to it. The presentation they switched it up a little bit, even with the logo. We have uh, SmackDown has a uh, a new theme song to start up the show. It's a Megan the Stallion uh track. Uh, I've seen some people talk about it on social media. They're not liking it. Doesn't fit it, which I can understand. I, I feel like SmackDown does deserve some type of rock type thing. Um, but maybe it'll grow on people. We'll see. But overall, the presentation for the most part, it didn't change the stage or anything like that. But it, it felt different. It definitely felt different tonight, and they brought it. <clears throat> they brought it. Uh, SmackDown on USA, they they brought the heat tonight, <clears throat> and we even got a little bit of overtime. I, I was really surprised about that. They gave us five minutes of overtime um, for, for tonight's episode. I don't know if that's going to be a regular thing, but I do appreciate that, and it was, it was a good stuff, good show. Uh, they started off with Triple H talking about the history of SmackDown and how far they've come. And they started it off with the steel cage match between Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa for the WWE Undisputed Championship. And they treated this like a big uh, fight field. The cage was lowering now and they had the flame pyro going up. So they, they were treating this like a, a PLE main event match. <clears throat> and the match was really really good i enjoyed um the back and forth between these guys even cody during the match ended up getting uh busted open um from solo sokoa diving head but uh, cody was kind of hung up in the turnbuckle uh corner turnbuckle and and so um solo did a uh diving head butt and that's the spot potentially where he got busted open at that's what the commentary had said and it was nice to see a little bit of uh, uh color there it didn't have to be gratuitous it made sense <clears throat> you know samoans have naturally thicker skulls <laughs> so you know it made sense in the simple fashion that we're in a steel cage match so there should be a little bit of color so i did appreciate that and I like the fact that <clears throat> Solo wasn't easy to put away. They made it uh, that, you know, Cody had to really work to put him away. There was a situation where Cody hit the crossroads and you're thinking, oh, that's it. And he kicked out of it. I was like, oh, okay. So they're, they're really getting behind uh behind solo being somewhat of a credible threat. Uh, one of the highlights uh, of the match is Cody having an opportunity to get out of the cage but instead he turns back and does essentially a cross body from the top of the cage onto uh a, a solo sokoa as he's standing up and once again um it was it was one of those things where it was like damn bro that was very very you know uh impressive to see you know say so anybody going to the top of the cage to do something i'm always giving them praise for it because anything can go wrong so the fact that cody normally is not the the huge high flyer going to the top of the cage hitting the cross body you know and i know that impact was uh pretty intense but that was a good moment and once again it's a cross body some people say oh i've seen crazier and all this other stuff but it worked it got a holy shit chant it was definitely a, a, a highlight of the match. But ultimately, Cody ended up um, dodging the Samoan spike at the end, countering it into another uh, crossroads for the one, two, and the three. He All it took was two crossroads, and he beat him. I thought he was going for the trifecta, but no, he beat him with a second crossroad. With no interference, I'm thinking the bloodline's going to interfere at some point. No, he lost clean in that ring as you could possibly lose clean in a steel cage match no interference so after that of course the bloodline was going to get involved so the bloodline starts surrounding the cage they climb up in the cage when in actuality you know they didn't really have to do that they could have just went all through the door but that's neither here nor there they climbed up into the cage and they started packing up uh cody man so as Cody is being attacked by the Tongans, uh, they they kind of position him so that way Jacob Fatu 
can do that hop up like he hops on the second rope hops on the third on the top rope and then does the the flip off the springboard off such a beautiful move and the the type of precision you have to have to be able to hit that without touching the ropes without keeping your balance and for someone his size hitting that move it's always beautiful when he hits it hits it on cody cody looks like he's done solo is directing traffic he's like hey go to the top so he's telling Jacob Fatu to go to the top of the cage to pretty much do the same thing off the top to kill this guy, essentially. And that's when Roman music hit. Roman comes out there, aura over 9,000, walks to the ring, gets inside the steel cage, closes the steel cage door because he's like, you know what? Nobody's leaving here. I'm packing people up. And then he starts fighting off the tongans, but then <clears throat> Solo is able to get the best of him for a little bit. He ends up going, uh, you know, Solo ends up going to the opposite corner to hit him with that, the, the hip attack that they do. But Roman gets out of there, hits him with a Superman punch. Crowd's going crazy. He's charging up. He's charging up. He's getting ready to hit the spear. And you're wondering, where's Jacob Fatu? Jacob Fatu grabs Solo out at the last minute. Crowd's booing. But then Roman says, nah, you get in the ring. And I was like, oh, yes. This is what we want to see. Crowd is chanting. They're getting excited like, oh, shit, this is about to happen. And Jacob Fatu got that, that wolf in him. Not the dog. He got that wolf in him. He gets into the ring. And he's, he's spazzing out, shaking his head. He's ready to go. Roman's ready to go. I'm like, oh, we about to get it. And then that's when uh, Solo removes him out of the ring. I'm like, ah, Solo. Ah, I see what they're doing. They tease the Jacob Fatu Roman Reigns one-on-one. -on -one. I love it. So Solo interferes and get Jacob out of there. And that's when... Um, uh, the Tongans start to attack Roman again. But then Cody gets into the mix. He starts helping out. He throws um, uh, Tonga Loa into the steel cage. And then uh, he ends up hitting uh, a beautiful uh, crossroads onto Tama Tonga. Tama Tonga sold it like a million bucks. And then Tonga Loa ends up eating a beautiful spear from Roman Reigns. And you see them kind of standing in the ring together that look they're looking at it the way they're looking at each other like obviously they don't they don't really rock with each other but they just helped each other out in this moment and then at the ramp you see uh jacob fatu giving solo sokoa um the ula fala so uh yeah they it, you could tell they they were planting the seeds of a tag team match it was just a question of how when it was going to be made official so we cut to the back and uh nick aldis was like yo we're we gonna figure out what's going on here and i don't know if y'all noticed but there was like a break the bray wyatt like sigil like one of his you know symbols or emblems was on like one of the like I don't know if it was like a forklift truck. It was something, but it was the symbol was on like whatever pole structure behind Nick Aldis while he was doing the interview. So I thought that was very interesting. They put that there for a reason. So we don't know what's going to happen with that. But Nick Aldis is like, hey, we're going to figure this out. And, you know, we're going to get some things situated. I'm going to talk to everybody involved. We're going to see if we can get this situated. So this was a really great part of the show. We got the tag team match between Kevin Owens and an unnamed mystery partner versus uh, Austin Theory and uh, Grayson Waller. So they come out there. Kevin Owens come out there. And then Kevin Owens' partner come out there. And his partner come out there. No one knows who he is. Everybody's like, what's going on? People in the chat like, what's, who is this guy? So he gets in there. And Kevin Owens like, look, my other tag team partner He's dealing with some travel issues. He he wasn't going to be able to make it on time. So I had to do what I had to do. I had to find somebody. And uh, this person's name here, he asked him what his name was. And, you know, uh, he told Kevin Owens his name is Ricky. So the crowd chanted Ricky, man. And I was like, you know what? 
We with you, Ricky. You know, it don't it don't take much for us wrestling fans to get behind people. We was with you, Ricky. But then uh, a producer came up to Kevin Owens and said, hey, he's here. And then he had to tell Ricky, like, hey, my partner is actually here, man. So I appreciate you. And then he gave Ricky a stone cold stunner for his trouble. I was like, ah, oh, Ricky didn't deserve that. We didn't get to see him go out there and put in that work with KO. And his real partner ended up being Randy Orton, man. So, once again, that was a such a fun, wholesome moment. And everybody on social media and Twitter have been going crazy with the We Want Ricky movement and justice for Ricky. And even after the end of the match, um, Kevin Owens and... Um, and Randy Orton ended up winning. You can hear Randy Orton saying, uh, not Randy Orton, Kevin Owens saying, hey, man, thank you, Ricky, bro. I'm sorry about that, but I appreciate you, Ricky. And even Randy Orton said, hey, man, appreciate you, Ricky. Ricky is the guy. We found out his Instagram. We found out his Twitter. Ricky is the guy. Hashtag we want Ricky, bro. <laughs> Let's get this guy over, man. He's already over. He's already over. There are people pitching Ricky versus uh Tonga Loa at WrestleMania next year's WrestleMania. So let's get it going, bro. Ricky versus Tonga Loa, WrestleMania 41. Let's let's <laughs> let's get it going. I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for it, man. Let's get it going. Let Ricky finish his story. Cody finished his. Ricky can finish his story too. So hey, if you if you guys rock with Ricky, put it in the uh, in the comments down below. Hashtag we want Ricky. So, let's get to the, the main event. Because a lot of us was waiting for what was going to happen. But before we get there, we get back with Nick Aldis. And he, he basically said, we're going to set up a tag team match at Bad Blood. Uh, Jacob and Solo, they already signed. They didn't even look at the contract. They already signed. So now I got to talk to Roman and I got to talk to Cody. Cody comes into the office and he's like, look. Look, bro, I already know what you about to say. I'm good. I ain't got nothing to do with the bloodline stuff. I'm done with that. I'm over with that. The bloodline is Roman Reigns' problem. I'm out of it. So, essentially, it does look like Roman was going to have to go this solo dolo. So, we get to the main event. Roman comes out there. Um, and, uh, he's, he's basking in the glory of his aura, everybody putting the ones up. And initially I'm thinking we only have like five minutes before he can actually say something, um, for, before he actually ended up saying anything. But what we didn't know is Fox was going to not Fox, fuck Fox, uh, USA was going to, gr uh, graciously give us some extra time. So we was able to go overtime. We didn't know that at the time, but it was much needed for this segment. So. Nick Aldis is like, you know, he starts talking. He's like, hey, man, I know we've had our, our differences and all this other stuff in the past. And he just puts his hand out. So Nick Aldis gives him the contract. He's like, no, I don't want this. Give me the microphone. Crowd's chanting. They're getting excited. This is the first time we've heard Roman Reigns speak on WWE television since WrestleMania. He has not said a single word since he's been back. Not audibly on a microphone. So he gets the microphone and he, he basically said, hey, man, I don't need this damn contract. I don't need no partner. The, the, it's, it's still the same me. I ain't changed. I ain't changed. I will go into this solo dolo by myself. I don't need no help. I'm going to do what I got to do. It doesn't matter if I don't have the family Ulafala. I am still the tribal chief. I am the original tribal chief. I am the only tribal chief. I own this ring. I own the WWE. I own all of this. Kind of a rendition of that infamous promo, him rock, walking back uh, up the ramp, talking about he owned everything. That shit was so cool. It's basically that, but a different version of it. He's basically saying, I own all of this. This is all mine. Doesn't matter if I if I'm not the, if I don't have the Ula Fala, I am still him. So it doesn't matter. We can get, we going to get it going. Nothing's changed with me. And then that's when Cody comes out. Cody comes out. He's not smiling. He, he has this dejected look, kind of a slight irritation. So he comes out there. Business is picking up. 
He gets a microphone. And he's holding that championship. He's letting it be known, like, you know, I'm still the champion. So he comes out there and he basically has exception with what Roman said. He's like, you know what? That was the case. You you did run things. You you did own all of WWE. Like you own WWE. You own everything out here, right? You did until I beat you at WrestleMania. And now I run WWE. And I love that from Cody. That's what we need. We don't need someone that's always oh good golly and g willikers and yeah i love to be here like you can have him be that sometimes but when someone that you already beat and you got the championship come back and say oh i still run everything no he made it very clear and simple you don't run anything no more i beat you this title says that i run everything now and that's all that needs to be said. So Cody didn't even come out there to help. He only came out there essentially to let it be known. I take exception to what you said there, Roman. This championship says otherwise. So Cody throws down the mic first. Roman throws down the mic. I'm like, oh, shit. They about to come to blows. We're here for it. Then Solo comes out there. Solo comes out there with Jacob Fatu behind him doing the prayer hands. So... They staring off at each other. They looking off at each other. And that's when Tama, uh, the Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa attack them from behind or whatnot. They're, they're getting jumped from behind. But ultimately, ultimately, they were able to essentially work together and stop them. They was able to work together reluctantly to stop them. Cause for, and then Roman looks at the contract. And you can hear Solo saying, "Oh, so y'all friends now? Y'all cool now? Y'all, 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 y'all cool with each other? Y'all buddies?" Roman signs the contract after they dispatched the the Tongans because they 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 took care of them with ease as expected. And once again, seeing them inadvertently work together twice in one night is a is a really good it's a really good story to tell there because they were reluctant the first time. It's not like they want to. So Roman signs the contract, and then you hear Solo say, he ain't going to sign it. You just going to go by yourself because he ain't going to sign it. And then Cody asked for the contract. And Roman had this irritated look like he didn't want to give him the contract, but he gave him the contract, and Cody signed it. I was like, oh, it's official. Roman and Cody Versus Solo and Jacob Fatu. This is story, storytelling that is finer, bro. This was great. Fantastic. Because now we know Roman. We know Cody. They don't like each other. They shouldn't be friends. This is a rivalry. of They should not be cool with each other. And I love that. They have respect, but they're not cool with each other. I love that. That dynamic. Roman and Cody on the same fucking team is, oh, this is going to be so good. That is going to be so damn good. And I can't wait to get that potential one-on-one -on -one with Roman and uh, Jacob Fatu in the ring. Bad Blood just went up even more. Oh, my God. Bad Blood just went to a whole nother level with the storytelling they can tell with this match. There's no titles on the line. This is all about pride and ego here. I can't wait. Can't wait, man. This was a great way to end off the show. Uh, I mean, a uh, great way to... Yeah, no, essentially a great way to end off the show. Uh, they gave us some extra time, much needed. Love that from USA. This was... This was great, bro. This was great. And it was a really good match. Cody versus Solo. Really good steel cage match, man. One of Solo's better better matches, man. This was good. I can't wait to see this tag match. It's going to be fun, bro. This is going to be fun because I do think this is also going to lead to Roman and Cody at some point. Roman and Cody 3 must happen. The question is when and how that's going to play out. Oh, my God. Woohoo!
Can't wait. Comment down below and let me know if y'all enjoyed this episode of SmackDown. I know I did. What was your favorite part of the show? Are you guys excited about the tag team match between Jacob and Solo versus Roman and Cody? Who would have thought? If y'all excited about that, let me know, man. But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.